Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Woody Pixel here. And today, finally got the Penrose full review. We had the unboxing video about two weeks ago. You guys got to see that and it was amazing. Now, we got the full thing happening. We're going to talk all about it. But before that, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to the 100 subs, 100 plus subs, I guess at this point. But we hit 100 subs and I'm grateful, I'm thankful. It's been cool. I've been working hard at all these videos I've been uploading for y'all lately. And I hope you guys keep enjoying the videos. Let me know, obviously, um, what you like, what you don't like. Give me your feedback. Um, people have been already, and I'm thankful for every single person. Thank you. Now, on to the video. We've been waiting a long time for the Penrose. If you were like me and one of the pre-order people, you waited about three months for this thing to come out, right? <laughs> it's been a long wait. So let's start with the design the design it's a soft touch finish it's pretty durable construction even though it's plastic construction and it feels like plastic it's not one of those plastics where it feels like something different the soft touch is really nice and it it's good on the skin you know like rubbing my hand all over it no fingerprints none of that stuff but it just feels a little weird um it feels mostly solid like the buttons and stuff like that they feel pretty good I will say like the volume rockers feel maybe not so sturdy, but that's also because they double as actual buttons. So they're volume rockers and they're buttons. More on that later. Some of my kind of grief with the design is the mic droop. There's a problem. The mic doesn't really stay in place. I think they just didn't use like enough material. I don't know what it is. If it's like that copper in the middle or whatever's wrapping around it. It's just not strong enough and it droops constantly while I'm playing and trying to talk with people. The blue accents. The blue is cool, but it looks super, super plasticky. It just has a very like not so good finish. Just a little bit of a cheap touch, I think. They could have gone with just a different paint job maybe and that might have made a world of difference. Who knows? I wish they had a little bit more of a gamery design. I'll tell you my personal preference. I love like how the Astro A50s look. I even like how the Steel Series look. Even a little bit how the HyperX look. I just wish they went a little more gamerish. I wish I could just come up with a mock-up and just show you guys what I think about it. But I just feel like it just looks a little too basic. Another thing about design, and this could go under connectivity also. The Bluetooth quick switch doesn't work. Um, this is before and after the recent firmware update. It just doesn't ever switch back to the last Bluetooth device I had. Um, if you're listening to Odyssey, I guess consider that a bug report. <laughs> and just wondering when that will be fixed. So let's talk about the connectivity. This thing has USB-C for charging and also for providing firmware updates and changes to the actual settings on the headset. Thank you for USB-C. The world needs more of this. I don't know why we still keep seeing micro USB at this point has wireless and Bluetooth connectivity, which I think is one of their killer features. You can use both at the same time. So you can be gaming on your PlayStation and you can also be connected to your phone via Bluetooth and fully talking to your friends and fully talking to whoever you want on the phone at the very same time. I actually tested this. I was able to make a phone call and talk with someone and they could also hear me on my PlayStation party at the same time. Crazy. Another use for that Bluetooth while you're connected to the wireless at the same time is music. You don't have to just rely on the Spotify app on your PlayStation. You can basically just use whatever music you want. You can go to YouTube, Pandora, whatever service you have, you can do it now and listen to it and it's all gravy. But maybe it's not all gravy. One of my peeves were that it didn't really connect that much to the Mac, my MacBook Pro. I would plug in the dongle and sometimes it just didn't detect it. Not sure why, but not something I would expect from a headset in this price range. And the connection dropped frequently when I was connected to Bluetooth on my MacBook. And even on the PlayStation sometimes, it would just drop during the match, like maybe for about five or 10 seconds and then connect back up. Not really sure what was happening, but again, just reporting the stuff as I've used it. And again, you guys need to know this stuff. Um, this is before the firmware update. After the firmware update, 
I haven't seen any drops. So just throwing that out there, maybe the firmware update will fix it if you've been experiencing this issue. So now let's talk about the comfort. The headset, ear cups, and the headband on top, they feel comfortable. Um, I could game for long periods of time and it wasn't the worst thing ever, but it also wasn't the most comfortable ever. For comparison, I've had plenty of headsets. I've had the Air Force 400 um, from Turtle Beach. I've had HyperX, I've had SteelSeries, Arctic 7s. And for me, HyperX, those ear cups are so plush and feel so good on my head. And that's always been the pinnacle, the best for me. And these kind of fall short. They both use some sort of memory foam, but I'm not sure what's happening here with the Penrose. It just doesn't feel that comfortable or that soft or that plush at all. Which leads me to my next point. Some of the cons are that it was a bit clampy. Um, there was a little bit of headset fatigue after long hours of playing. And it just doesn't, again, doesn't feel very plush. I was expecting some crazy, crazy, just like ear cup experience, just soft, nice memory foam to the touch. Again, comparing them to $100 HyperX Cloud 1 or 2, whichever you like, those feel so soft if you've ever used them. And these for $300. I don't think there's even any comparison. They're just not as comfortable. Now moving on to the sound. The sound is so good. Odyssey is known for making the high-end headphones and gaming headsets are starting to get into it. This is their first with the Penrose, their first major headset to actually be marketed directly to gamers. They had the Mobius and they had the partnership with HyperX actually also, but those you can't consider the HyperX just because, again, it wasn't their actual headset. And the Mobius, even though it's for PC, again, not really marketed to all gamers. This, this one with the Penrose is the first that is supposed to be for all gamers. In the game that I was playing, I could clearly make out sound. I could clearly make out directions. Everything sounded good and nice and clean. And considering these are just stereo headphones that's it all you're getting with this but they sound really really good odyssey you did a good job with this one but that's not to say that the sound is without its quirks so one was the bass sounded a little flat no i'm not a bass head at the same time you need something warm something a little rumbly i think when you're playing games because that's kind of like the impact that you feel when you're playing like a game like call of duty or even with Fortnite that has gun shooting and big powerful rockets and all this stuff going off. I didn't really get that rumble, that thunder that you should feel with gaming headsets. Another problem I had was actually with the Odyssey HQ app. I'm using it on Windows, I'm using the upgraded version, the latest. They sent them an email telling us all that we should upgrade the firmware and upgrade to the latest Odyssey HQ. I did that. And one of my peeves is actually, I think, a feature they should add. They should add some gaming presets. So what I mean by that is they just kind of have the EQs laid out and you can manually go in and kind of tune them if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, someone like me or just like most gamers, you're not really going to mess with things. You're just kind of going to leave them as is and never make any actual profiles. I think they should make some profiles for like maybe the top... 50 popular games and you can switch between between them you know or just just honestly even make some like i don't know like a base profile or like a clarity profile or just something like that where users aren't just looking at the screen where you just move up sliders we're not all gonna know what those hertz are for i can look them up i can google them and kind of figure it out easy but i'm not gonna spend the time doing that i'd rather be doing other things and just kind of dive right into the headset and be able to use it and mess around with the sound. Also something kind of bad I would say I was experiencing, haven't had it happen after the firmware upgrade, but I was experiencing it for two weeks where I'd have this volume explosion glitch. The volume explosion glitch was I'd be playing the game and all of a sudden the connection would drop, no sound at all. Then it would come back and the volume would be at max volume and it would just explode into my ears and I would just like freak out. <laughs> And that's probably not good if you're playing 
video games, especially with all explosions and gun shooting and even friends just yelling in your ear. So hopefully this firmware update fixed it. Please, 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 I hope that it fixed it. Next, we're gonna talk about the microphone. Their microphone, I guess, profile is a little bit of a warmer, deeper, richer profile. They partnered with company Shure who makes professional microphone equipment and I think it shows here. It sounds so good, it sounds nice and warm. I'm not gonna say it's competing with external dedicated microphones like the USB mics, like the blue mics and all those guys out there, but it's really good. I could see in like a Penrose 2, it actually catching up to them. And I actually have an audio clip sample that you can hear right now. So go ahead and listen. Test, test, one, two, three. Here using the Penrose headset to test what it sounds like so you guys can hear my voice. I don't know if that sentence made any sense. Playing some GTA, using the Penrose wireless connection. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Tell me if you think it sounds good or not. And the full microphone review is coming soon. Not much complaints here about the mic overall, but when I first got it, I did have one problem. Um, everyone everywhere on Mac, on my PC, on my PlayStation said it sounded muffled for about two days until I figured out how to reset the headset. And once I did, everything was good from then on. I'm not sure what the heck happened. Um, powering on and powering off didn't fix it. I specifically had to reset it to get it fixed. So not sure why that bug was there, but I guess it's easy enough to fix. So now let's talk about the battery life. Battery life is rated for about 15 hours of continuous playback. It's been lasting, I wanna say about eight hours for me on average. Um, so not really close at all to the marketed battery life. Um, if you ask me, it's a little average or even a little on the bad side if you ask me because eight hours is about one long play session if you're a hardcore gamer or maybe two or three play sessions if you're an average gamer, something like that. If you're not a big gamer at all, then maybe it'll last you a few weeks. But at the same time, um, this is designed for gamers. Most, most gamers are playing a few times a week and you probably have to charge this a few times a week. Which leads me to my next point. The actual charge time is about three hours. Oof. So <clears throat> if you do the math, last eight hours, have to charge it about three hours. Um, so that kind of adds up to you charging it maybe I don't know, like if you game like me where you're gaming very, very often, then you might have to charge it a few times a week. And to be honest, I feel like it should last a lot longer than that. Maybe they can come up with a firmware update to address the battery issues because again, the eight hours is not even close to 15 hours of the time that they said that it should last. So now let's talk about the connectivity really quick. So on the actual headset itself, it has two volume rockers, one for your own microphone, on um, voice level, your speaking volume, and for listening volume. Has an aux jack, USB-C jack, has a multi-function button, has a power button, and it also has a microphone button. Has a lot of connectivity, this is honestly one of my favorite things. It's so powerful in that sense. And I think this is, again, one of their kind of selling features, the connectivity. Again, the ability to connect to Bluetooth and wireless at the same time and kind of just toggle between the connections. It just works so well and it's just such a feature and I wish more gaming headsets would do stuff like this. The actual volume rockers on the headset double as buttons that you can actually push in and have different features. But like I mentioned before, the one where you can quickly switch back and forth between Bluetooth devices does not work. It has not worked with the first firmware and it hasn't worked with the recent firmware update. So that's something Odyssey you gotta get on. So here's the conclusion. Should you buy the Odyssey Penrose headset? I'm gonna say it depends. So <clears throat> when I first got this thing, I was so excited, but it's had a lot of firmware issues. Um, Again, the volume explosion glitch, a lot of connectivity issues. 
the microphone issue that I had where I sounded muffled for two days until I figured out online how to get it to reset. Not power on, power off, an actual reset um, button combination I had to figure out online. These are not all things I would expect from a $299 headset. This is a higher tier. This is like Astro A50 level. I could have got Astro A50s as well, right, for the same price. So I'm expecting this thing to be like gold out the gate, like maybe little tweaks here and there. And I even had some issues with the actual Odyssey HQ window software where it didn't detect my headset sometimes. And I guess the icing on the cake for me kind of not recommending it is the Odyssey HQ app for Android and iOS. It's not existent. They did put out an email saying that they're going to release it soon, but after three months of pre-order delays, I would expect this thing to kind of just be ready at this point and be ready and shipped with the product. This is a really good headset. I like it. I'm going to keep mine. I'm enjoying it. But I just think that it could have been a lot smoother of a launch. Again, for a $299 product, you know, you're really getting to that higher end point where like you just got to land that excellence, right? So that's my take on it. Um, <clears throat> if you bought it already, I don't think it's a case where you need to return it. I don't think it's that bad and they've cleared out a lot of the issues it seems like with this latest firmware update. I've only had it for a day or two because that's when it came out. But everything's been running smooth since then. Um, I would I would just say that it's very competitive at this price point. Again, you have like Ashray 50s, you have Arctic Wireless Pros that are really good headsets as well to compete with. So I think they could have came out a lot stronger and you should really consider your options. That being said, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the full review. I'm gonna be coming out with a microphone comparison again because I do think that this headset still has some really strong features and key points like the mic. Drop some comments. If you got more questions, ask them. I love to use the comments like that so we can go back and forth and talk. Feedback if you liked it. If you just want to give me a shout out, give me some support. Hit that sub button, hit the like button. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.